talking about the debate, it was really interesting. Um, I will say, I don't think that they're, I, I don't know. Um, Vivek Ramaswamy might be the only person that I could even see myself voting for on that stage. Um, simply because he's the only person that's not a neocon on that stage. Um, I, you, if you, you've been following me for long enough, you know, that I spoke at an anti-war rally, you know, spoke to end the funding that we're sending over to Ukraine, um, spoke to end all foreign funding. Here's the thing. We don't need to be involved in other people's wars. I am an anti-war veteran. I don't think that we should be sending money to fund proxy wars all the way around the world. So honestly, when all those people are, um, when all those people want to, um, you know, when they're they're basically in lockstep with the Democrats on this, um, it's just not going to happen. Like, I, I'm not going to support you. That is honestly war wars and war funding is one of my red line issues where um, I I'm not going to support you if you're for foreign invasions, foreign, you know, wars, um, you know, and I, I thought one thing I also thought with Vivek was he was he did what Donald Trump did in 2016. He made it entertaining. Everybody ganged up on him because they're afraid of him. And he had the best comebacks that you can think of. Like, honestly, when when Nikki Haley said, you have zero foreign policy experience and it shows. And he said, I hope you enjoy, you know, when you're sitting on the I, ho I hope you enjoy your next career on the board of Raytheon um, and Lockheed. That was those types of zingers just made me like him. He's a likable person and nobody else on that stage came across as a likable person. Um, my support for Ron DeSantis has been fading for quite a while. Um, I think he had some good intelligent points at the debate, but he didn't, you know, he didn't chime in enough. He didn't really have any of those moments that made you go, you know, any of those clippable moments. Um, you know, I think he, I think he sank his career with two clips where when they asked a question, Vivek Ramaswamy was the only person that shot his hand up and everybody else waited to see what the audience did or waited to see what their fellow people said on stage. And then they raised their hand when it was, when the question was, would you support Donald Trump if he was the nominee? Ramaswamy's hand goes up. Everybody else starts looking around and, you know, starts timidly, timidly raising their hand when it, when they talked about, um, I think it was the, 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 the comment on, um, Ukraine hand goes up. Ramaswamy's hand goes up. No, I mean, just decisive. And that was when Ron DeSantis goes, eh, maybe. Um, he, he, he didn't look like the leader that he has in Florida. I think that's, that's hard. Um, so I think he's, his campaign is sinking. I think Ramaswamy is, is going to be a clear second place going forward. Like I said, I mean, when he, <laughs> I just, I enjoyed it because I didn't know how this debate was going to go. Um, cause there is an entertainment value to this, right? Like I said, DeSantis gave some good answers, but he was not, he wasn't speaking very much. He didn't speak much at all. And everybody was going after Ramaswamy and he was just taking it to them. Like there was the point where Chris Christie tried to compare him to Obama. And Vivek was like, why don't you come give me a hug just like you did to Obama? Um, so I, I think there's, there's a lot. Yeah, I think, yeah, Courtney, I think you're right. I, I I've never really, Chris Christie has been a, basically a Democrat um, for most of, um, so Courtney said, Christie needs to go away permanently. I had to deal with him for a very long time in New Jersey. 
remember when I see his face again. Yeah. He is he's slimy. He is just as bad as most of the Democrats. There, that's one I would never vote for somebody like Chris Christie. That's you know, I and there's the things, there's some things I think um I think Nikki Haley answered a couple. There was one question that I thought she answered very well. Um I think that some I mean a lot of them had some good answers. But their there's their support for foreign war and foreign invasions is um and 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 proxy wars really really hurt what I thought about them. So and I don't think I could I could vote for that. Um Courtney, you also had mentioned um about Vivek's support for Israel. Yeah, so here's the thing. Um Israel is one of those really weird topics because it's going to be hard to get a lot of people to pull support from Israel. Now, I support Israel's right to exist. I support Israel as a as a as a nation. Um, but I don't support our funding of their their military. I don't. I, I think. Um, I think that they they do well enough that they can fund their own Iron Dome defense systems. And and what really got me thinking about this too is when you really when you really look at what happens in Israel when Obama took or when Biden took over. Remember there was that days. I mean it was a lot of artillery being shot into Israel. Sorry, dogs are not liking the storm. Um, but no, so there was days of, of artillery being shot over into, into Israel. And the, and the problem with that is, and the thing is, is you start to realize like we gave the Palestinians COVID aid. Actually, it was, we gave the Palestinians aid. Obama gave Iran, you know, $5 billion back or five, was it 5 billion? Gave them their money back. And then here's the thing. Um, so basically what you're starting to realize is, is that we, the United States, are funding a proxy war between ourselves, against ourselves, right? So we fund Iran and the Palestinians to shoot rockets into our Iron Dome defense system that we pay for for Israel. So Magnificent Devil says, Vivek says he wants to let the military support for Israel lapse when it expires in 2028 and the interim use diplomacy. Yeah, I mean, that that is, um, yeah, we already have this, we're already on the hook for it. So you, it's not really like we're going to go and, and uh, you know, take the stuff back. So I, I, I like that, you know, but I, I, I think that we just need to get out of the business of funding foreign countries. And he made a great point. Now, we probably have differing opinions on what we need to do about the border. Um, I can't remember what his opinion was. I actually saw him at Freedom Fest this year. Um, I don't remember what his, he was talking about. But that's right. I mean, we are funding to fight wars on other people's borders when our borders are wide open. We can, you know, there, there's so much stuff here at home that needs to be fixed and our money needs to go do that. 